Hello mountain bike friends. In this video, we are going to give you absolutely everything you need to know. Oh boy. Yeah, yeah mate. Everything you need to know. Turn out absolutely. Absolutely. Hello mountain bike friends. In this video, we are going to cover absolutely everything you need to know about dropper posts. It is a buyer's guide per se. We're going to cover a quick history on dropper posts and their current state of reliability. We're going to tell you how to get the right size post for your bike and all of the compatibility issues. Levers slash remotes for dropper posts. We're also going to tell you in our decade of experience of using, selling, and warrantying all different types of dropper posts, our top five picks. And finish it off with serviceability, things to consider, and final thoughts on these dropper post things. Boom! Let's do it! Dropper posts have been around for when? Since the dawn of time. In the 80s, that was the first the iteration of the drop. The height right? The height right. So these things have existed for a long time, but they really didn't become mainstream and just really popular, and people didn't really see the immense amount of value in these things until probably the RockShox Reverb put them on the map in a, in a big way. That was 10 years ago? Yeah, about like late 2000s. Yeah, I literally will not ride a bike without a dropper post. Now, even my gravel bike has a dropper post on it. It's just so convenient to be able to hit a lever push the seat out of your way and use the bike in a very different way than you would when the seat's all the way up. Would you ride a bike with no dropper post? I don't think so. I tried and uh, yeah, no, not, not yeah, now. Can't not do fun. it. Can't do so it. So it's kind of a must have component. When they were originally released, probably for about seven years after that, especially the first five years, they were just unreliable. Every brand had an unreliable dropper post. Um, they were all terrible. Which, what was your, do you have any experiences? Oh, I've had multiple experiences with, uh, with the reverb. Yeah, the reverb kind of has the worst rap when it comes to an unreliable dropper pose. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. But then remember, it was also the biggest, most predominant dropper pose. So there was like tens of thousands, or maybe hundreds of thousands of them made and sold. So their warranty rate, if it's all a percentage. Uh, okay, all right. Yeah, no matter what dropper post you're talking about, if you do some Googling and dig in, you will find dirt on it. So there is not one single dropper post that's never had any problems, and there's not one that only has problems. They kind of all have had their problems. It's true. Houston, we have a problem. But that's the past. In the last three years, I would say, these things have actually become reliable. And what I mean by reliable is I mean there's a very, very small percentage of every brand and model dropper post that has a warranty issue. So for the most part, Stick with brand names, stick with some good stuff. You're not gonna have any warranty problems. They still didn't need to service them, but they're pretty reliable, wouldn't you say? That's true, I don't think I could have put it any better myself. Yeah, so there you go. It's been about a decade of dropper posts of these like modern day dropper posts. The last three years is when all sort of the top dog brands have made these things legitimately reliable. So, don't panic. Uh, we got a nervous Nelly here. You're gonna get a good one no matter what you're upgrading to. And if you have an old one that's not reliable, just get a more modern one that's been made in the last couple of years by a good brand and you will be satisfied. You'll thank yourself. You'll thank yourself. When it comes to getting the right size dropper post, unfortunately, it's not that easy. Is it easy? It's never easy. It's never easy. Sometimes it's easy. Some, well, when? No, not often. <laughs> Uh, dropper posts are kind of complicated because there's a few things you, well, a few things, a few dozen things you really need to consider. Some of the basics are diameter. So every bike is, I shouldn't say all of them, but there's, there's a few common diameters, 30.9 and 31.6. Those are the most common diameters on modern day mountain bikes, which would be using dropper posts. Then you have, of course, 27.2. 27.2, gravel and bikes and hardtails, ooh, and 34.9. 34.9, those are some of the more like rare diameters. Mm -hmm. um, you can't mess up your diameter. The next part is actually how that cable is routed to the post. So all these ones we have. Internal. So that would be called an internal or stealth. And most modern mountain bikes, probably in the last five years, mm -hmm. have been making cable routing so you can route the cable internally. Internally, in your yeah. frame. Through your frame. Through yeah. your frame. So the cable connects to the bottom of the post. The bottom of the post right here. But you also have. Externally routed posts. Externally routed. Yes. Yep. Not as common nowadays, but you'll probably, you know, some of the more entry-level bikes, you know, they're not gonna have internal routing. 
you're probably gonna wanna use an externally routed post for those. Yeah, and just like older, right? So if your bike was designed without a dropper post in mind, it probably doesn't have a slot to route that cable into the bottom of the post. So an externally routed post, which you can see now, the cable connects on the external, on the outside of the post, so you don't have to have a bike that has internally routed cable. That's so, correct. Yeah, that's, that's important. Correct. Very and important. And the more details, oh my the gosh. more details. Oh, like the length? The more details. Is that what you're talking about? So we wanted to make a dropper's post buyer's guide video, and that's what this is. If you want to really dig into the nitty gritty of how to get the right size, that could be a whole nother video, 20 minutes long on itself. We actually made one some years ago. We have a really good article below in the video description that explains how to actually fit one of these things, because you have to measure all sorts of various things. So. Your total length. Total length. Your insertion depth. Insertion depth. How far that thing can go into your frame. You have to consider the travel that you want. Travel. So travel is important because that makes a big difference in how the dropper post is going to function. Common travels these days, 150 to 150, 200? 170, 200. Yeah. Uh, 150 to probably 170 are the yeah. most common for mountain bikers, what they're using these days. You might see 100 mil uh, on a cross country bike, cross country, or if your frame just has a really big seat tube and mm -hmm. you're maybe a little short for the frame and you can only fit a 100, you might only be able to fit a certain amount of travel on your bike. Maybe an older style bike. Yeah. So consider that too with travel. Again, this topic is confusing. So the most common travel lengths for popular mountain bikes, 150 to 170, 200. Um, but mess around with understanding all this sort of stuff. Look at the link below, check out some other videos. When you really get down to deciding which post you want and then how to buy the exact right one, you can consult guys like us because we answer this kind of questions all day in our store. Um, but uh, yeah, a lot of other articles yeah. on that topic. Exactly. So not to punt this entire topic, but it is a 20 minute video in itself. So when you figure out which post you want, then you can dive into which exact one you need in terms of diameter, routing, travel, insertion depth, all that other stuff, and the exact bike you're trying to put it on. That's right. <laughs>So when you are looking at your lever options, there's a couple of things to consider, mainly the mounting type. And that is going to basically come down to if your cable is cinched down at the remote or if the cable is cinched down at the bottom of the post. Like for instance, this one here, the Race Face A-Fact remote, the cable barrel, the end of the cable goes into this one and this end. Yeah, that's because the Race Face A-Fact post is made for the bottom of that cable, not the head of the cable, but just the other bottom of it to be connected in the post. So some posts, the canable, the... The canable. The canable. The yeah. canable connects at the bottom. Yes. Right. And on the other post, the canable connects at the at top. At the top. So the cable end, like most posts like this, you can see the cable end goes in here, and then you cinch down the cable at the remote. Yep. So don't forget that the dropper levers out there also known as remotes. Some of our favorites. Some of our favorites. We made a video on the top three favorites about a couple years ago. There's probably some new ones now. Yeah. One Up makes a great one. PW, Wolf Tooth. What are the ones you like? The new Fox one's pretty great. The new Fox one is nice. Some of our favorites, they have a bearing, a sealed bearing in them, which you can see on this One Up one right here. Whereas like this Race Face one does not have a bearing. It's just a bushing, so it just goes like this. Turn it off! Most of the time, these are not sold with the post. So you will need to buy a remote separately. So when you do that, make sure what you mentioned earlier, yes. the cable mounts accordingly. Uh, typically the same brand that sells a dropper post, the brand and model, if you get the same brand and model post, it obviously will work with that. But you can get those aftermarket ones as well. And then you might get a nicer lever, which yeah. does make a very tactile difference in your uh, feeling of dropper posts. It definitely does. Ergonomics does come into play here for sure. What's your all time favorite? Oh my gosh, wow. I think it's a tie between probably the new Fox one, PNW, and Wolf Tooth. Mm, yeah. What about I, yours? I What's your that. favorite? I think my all time favorite's a Wolf Tooth. Really? Yeah, it just looks cool. It has a really nice feel to it. CNC made in US. I'm Adjustable. Just, I'm just kind of a fan of that. It has a little breakaway point in case you right? crash on that. That is thing. true. Yeah. It's a great point. So there's a lot of nice oh, dropper oh, post levers point, out there. Breakaway point, breakaway oh. point. We'll be here all day. I have a hundred dollars right here for whoever knocks that loud mouth son of a bitch out. <laughs> Should we redo that one? <laughs> we 
We have been using, selling, and warranting dropper posts for over a decade now. And we've learned a lot from that. And we're still constantly learning a lot from that, seeing what people are enjoying, what's coming back with warranty issues. And like I said, in the last three years, dropper post warranties are minimal, very minimal. Yeah. Not like, I mean, microscopic. Like they're just like normal. They're like any normal sort of suspension complicated mountain bike part, right? There's gonna be some warranty issues, but it's very, very minimal across all the good brands. Whereas five years ago, seven years ago. More common. That's all we did. I think yeah. the whole business was warranting dropper posts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and dealing with people who were mad about it. So anyways, to talk about some of the ones that we really enjoy and think are really high quality, this is in no particular order because all of these are at very different price points and have various different features and serviceability and things like that. So no particular order. No particular order. But first is the 1UP V2. <laughs> the 1UP Components V2, 209 bucks. It has a here. really low stack height. Mm -hmm. So you can get the most travel out of it given the amount of uh, insertion depth you have. Why are you laughing? Is that no, funny? I'm laughing, yeah. I, no, yeah, it's relatively <laughs> lightweight as well. Right? Dude, it's 209 bucks. It's, it's adjustable it's actually, travel. It is a great price for a yeah. relatively lightweight, adjustable, low stack height, just all around, really well-rounded, great post. Yeah, it is. And second up, Fox Transfer. That's right. The yeah. Fox Transfer, AKA Race Face Turbine. Yeah, it's the same thing. Fox purchased the brand Race Face, I don't know, four yeah. years ago or something. Which is this right here. Um, yeah, and then they basically just turned the Race Face dropper post into a Fox Transfer with the Race Face logo on it. But anyways, the Fox Transfer was one of the first really reliable, good, high quality dropper posts out there. They've continued to iterate on it and make it lighter and better and fancier and even nicer. Um, just a really good one that we always recommend and have really good experience with. Always even had good to experience. This day. Um, then the Reverb Access Electronic. Oh, uh, let me tell you, that is the drop post. <laughs> it's also $800. It is also $800. $800. <laughs> so it is wireless. It goes with SRAM's whole AXS access ecosystem. So if you want a wireless dropper post, which is unbelievably simple and easy to install and mm -hmm. set up, um, yeah, that is the thing. Very cool. So no wire. No, no wire. No cable. Nope. Wireless, cableless. Wireless, cableless. Yeah, that is nice. It's very cool. Then, PNW. Oh, PNW. Loam. Oh, come on, Do give me a break. PNW Loam. Hello. Amazing price, very adjustable, also lightweight. I mean, what more could you want out of a drop post? Buck 99. Oh, great price, duh. Yeah, a lot of travel options, uh, little, what do you call this thing? Oh, that's a... Accent ring? Yes. You can change the colors of yes. it, check that out. You can change the color of it to match your other PNW accessories, come on! <laughs> it's awesome! Like your grips, bars, or dropper lever from PNW. Yes! Yeah, that is nice. It's very cool. These are, this is a really fancy post for a buck 99. It's really cool. I'm totally impressed with the value you get out of this thing. Yeah, and no, one this one's mine, so yeah. you can get your own. <laughs> Literally was like, I'm gonna buy that after we're done filming this video. <laughs> <laughs> oh, last but not least, Bike Yoke. This is 320 to 380. This has got a really interesting feature. Well, probably multiple ones, but the most interesting one, tell them about that. It's a bleed valve up here. So with the most common issue with hydraulic actuated posts is you end up developing a sort of squish at a certain point where the air mixes with the hydraulic cartridge, and then you get a little squish at the top when you sit on it. Well, with the bike yoke, it comes with a little tool. It's very handy. You just turn it up here at the top of the post, push the post down, and then your post has been bled and it is fully serviced. Yeah, you don't have to take your seat off. You don't have to take the post out of your bike. It's actually a really cool serviceability feature. Mm -hmm. So, and they come in some really long travel options. They're one of the first brands to make really long travel options. Mm -hmm. This one's so, 213 millimeter travel. Look at the length on that guy. That's what she said. And if you ask me how they came up with 213 millimeters, I do not have an answer for that. Yeah, why isn't it 215, 220, or 200, or 210? Maybe it's because two plus one equals three. Final thoughts. Dropper post, what are your final thoughts? Final thoughts. Look at all of your options, determine what's gonna work best for you and your bike, how much travel you need, how much you're looking to spend, how cool you want to look on the trail. That, yeah, that is true. Cool factor is, it does matter. Oh yeah. Um, it is a complicated part, so do consider you're gonna have to put in some research here or talk to an expert and figure out which exact one you need for your bike and your height and your size frame, 
all of that sort of stuff. Also remember, you do need to service these things. It's a pretty complicated part with air and hydraulics and friction and seals and grease. Um, this one we have semi taken apart. You can see on this PNW post how you can actually adjust the travel right here. It's often fairly simple to do like a quick seal service on these things, but it does need to be serviced. So do remember that. I think in the early days of dropper post, people were buying them, riding them for 500 hours and then they would fail and they'd be like, warranty. And it's like, no, they actually were supposed to service that every like 20, 50 hours, you know? Turns out. Um, turns out. So so just keep that in mind. Uh, dropper posts are amazing. They really make a huge difference in your bike, which I'm guessing if you've watched this video, you probably already have one. You're probably just looking to upgrade or maybe not. And it's gonna be your first one and it will change your life forever. It'll change your life forever. Change your life forever. Uh, yeah, that's dropper post. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, don't forget to check the link below in the video description for the article that contains all of this sort of stuff and more in text and images and all of that that helps you figure out how to get the right one and which ones are the best. That is 100% true. That's all. That's it. That's all. Thank you. We love you. Goodbye. Thank you. We love you. Goodbye. Please share this with your mountain bike friend who's looking to buy a erecting dropper post. Share it with them. <laughs>